All right, free radicals, welcome back. I'm Dave, and this is the Radical Independent. Thank you for watching as I have returned after my incredible vacation where I moved a whole bunch of heavy stuff from one house to another house. Uh, if you don't ever have to do this, please don't do it. Please don't. Moving is one of the worst experiences uh, one can ever have. Even though I had movers to help me, uh, I am still hurting from... Uh, the top to the bottom. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so here is President Donald Trump warmongering during a pandemic. Yay! This is what we need, right? Sure. Is this what he meant the other day when he said we can do two things at the same time? Hmm. Um, upon information and belief, Iran, what, I mean, belief? All right. Upon, this is the dumb tweet. Okay, this guy at times is not very well spoken and he's not very well written. Upon information and belief, or Iran or its proxies are planning a sneak attack on US troops and or assets in Iraq. Okay, so where where are the troops again? They're in Iraq. Again, where are the troops? They're in Iraq. Now, if the troops weren't in Iraq, this whole tweet wouldn't exist because Iran and its proxies weren't they wouldn't be planning a sneak attack. I mean, what are we doing in Iraq? Seriously, what are we doing in Iraq still? And isn't this the the war that Trump hated so much that he he just laid out George W. Bush or and Jeb Bush, the whole thing. Just laid them out. And by the way, it was awesome. At that moment, I thought, well, maybe Trump finally gets it. Maybe he's really a good guy and he's going to go in there. Nope. Nope. You know what happens every few weeks when he doesn't do saber rattling? And by the way, we're in the midst of a pandemic, okay? But every few weeks, so he doesn't saber rattle. And what happens is the national security state, they get a little bit antsy. Their Twitter is trying to move me along. They're trying to move me along. So I'm going to, I'm just going to stay with this. Um, and so what happens is every few weeks, then all of a sudden you get stuff about Venezuela, stuff maybe about Libya, stuff about Yemen and Saudi Arabia. And now you're getting this. Seriously? I mean, all right, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. But if I were a good conspiracy theorist, I would say that it looks as though while all this crap is going on and the world is kind of occupied with saving itself, the United States is going to engage in more war <laughs> with Iran or Iraq. And I, I just, I cannot wrap my brain around this. You declare their standing army a terrorist organization last year. Oh yeah, bunch of terrorists, really? Because they're, they're the country's army. So have they been coming over here to do stuff on our soil to create an atmosphere of terror? You know, the country is already terrorized right now. We already have worldwide terrorism going on. And it has nothing to do with uh, one country attacking another country. Although, again, if I were a conspiracy theorist, you might be able to peg this on a country. I'm not going to do that because that's not a healthy conversation at this stage. What you need to do is just focus on the task and defeat it. How are we going to focus on the task at hand which is global in scale, and we're going to sit here. And by the way, this has 94,000 likes and 24,000 plus retweets. And this is the President of the United States. So the last sentence, um, if this happens, Iran will pay a very heavy price indeed. Yeah, nothing like taking your eye off the ball, which is the epidemic. That is what you're, you should be laser focused on, on that. 
But if I'm going to cut Trump slack, I'm going to say he gets a knock on the door every so often. And, you know, it's the national security state. Well, Mr. President, you haven't been talking about Iran or Iraq or Venezuela or Yemen or Libya. And we need to know for sure if uh, you're going to continue with this uh, war, global war during this uh, epidemic, pandemic. Um, we can't be weak, sir. We've got to show strength. I mean, what kind of a conversation is that? We understand that the world is under siege, sir, but we need to know um, what are you going to do? Because we believe Iran or it's so he puts this tweet out, right? And it's supposed to generate like a patriotic response from people who are currently worried if they're going to live through the pandemic. This is the president of the United States at this moment. This is why I can I can't I know there are people who used to like Tulsi Gabbard, right? Who I talked about all the time. A lot of those people are going to go and vote for Donald Trump, a lot of them. And I would say like the old drunk driving commercial, friends don't let friends vote Trump, okay? At this stage. Be too, oh, right. He's got this higher approval rating. It's because the media is beat up on him and he just he leverages that and the media thinks it's cool because they get ratings out of it. But it's like a giant disinformation campaign and nobody gets any truth because one side's just trying to tear Trump apart. And I, by the way, I think that's wrong, even though I think Trump is a buffoon. I think just going after Donald Trump and trying to destroy him for the sake of doing it, it's a, it's a huge campaign of misinformation or disinformation, however you want to characterize it. But this too, he's, what is, you know, Trump could be trying to leverage, hey, during a time like this, I'm going to show you how I can walk and chew gum at the same time. And then the country is going to be really impressed because, hey, this, the neoliberal order, Hillary Clinton, you know, Donald Trump, you know, might get on the phone with Hillary Clinton and say, hey, Hillary, what do you think about this? You know, I know you don't like me, but we can be together on this and uh, my numbers will go up and your numbers will go up individually. You'll be uh, praised again because you're back to your warmongering self and you're doing it on the world stage. Wouldn't you, it, nothing shocks me anymore. I mean, I don't think those two people are going to get together and do anything, but it wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock me. I just think that um, the Democrats are able to fundraise, at least uh, from their resistance crew. They're really good at fundraising when they um, make Trump into certain things that Quite honestly, most of the people in that party are okay with. They just don't like the fact that Trump is doing it. it has nothing to do even with him being a Republican. It's because he's a contrarian. He's an outsider. He's uncouth. He's he's not quality. You know, he's not one of the meritocracy class. So that's why he gets so much grief. Do I think he's outfoxing them or playing 3D chess or anything? No. No, I don't. I think this is his way of sort of floating a trial balloon. And also, he doesn't want the epidemic talked about 24 hours a day. This gets some of that off the first 10 pages. I was going to say the front page, but it's just like one page, two page. It's, it's all the same coverage, and it's saturation. So now people can focus on this and go, yeah, if they're coming after us, boy, uh, we're going full throttle. They're they're gonna have a heavy price to pay, indeed. And all of you, you know, pro-military people who just constantly want war because it's fun to see bombs blowing up and so forth, and it makes for great primetime television where every TV show pretty much covers the same material, even though you know they may be in a local city and you're supposed to be focusing on that area. But there's always stuff from, like, the terrorism world that works into the script. I mean, Trump is working hand-in-hand, hand basically, with Hollywood. Because that's our entertainment. That's how we're entertained. We're entertained by war, war simulation, uh, you know, militarized police, 
television shows that um, are way over the top that glamorize and glorify all of the violence and all the things that happen on our streets. I don't think anybody wants to really glamorize that stuff or we really are not in a good time to be focused on this stuff. And this is mind-blowing to me. I mean, he's already got almost 98,000 likes. It's just incredible based on what people think is important right now. They really, they're worried about Iran or its proxies. If the troops weren't there, this wouldn't be a problem. Bring the troops home. You know, if that's his next tweet, then okay, great. But he basically says if this happens, Iran will pay a very heavy price indeed. More sanctions, more bombing. This is how you ratchet up a war that didn't exist. It didn't, this didn't exist. Call out their military as a terrorist organization and then say, hey, we've got to go fight the terrorists because now we've we've decreed that these are all terrorists. So anyway, um, not a good not a good tweet by Donald Trump. Uh, and for you Tulsi supporters that are going to go back to Trump, <laughs> this is really Green Party, Libertarian Party. I don't care. Look, for me, the Greens are better because in a pandemic, who's going to be better, the Green Party or the Libertarian Party? The Libertarian Party, what, they're going to say the free market's going to fix it? Or, you know, people who don't have money, those are the people that are most vulnerable and it's kind of like survival of the fittest. And, you know, that person didn't work as hard as the other person who is able to survive it. Yeah, no, that doesn't sound, look, I'm a, I'm a really lousy Christian, but that doesn't sound very Christian to me. And uh, you got to read Jesus and what he says, especially the red letters. Those are his actual words. You got to read those in the Bible. And then you can come to an understanding that, you know what? (laughs) Uh, This isn't the way we're supposed to be doing business. But we continue to do it that way. And there are a lot of people that embrace it. A lot of people who consider themselves uh, somewhat Christian or some other faith. Donald Trump right now is taking orders from the national security state. And he's doing it willingly and cheerfully. So uh, he does not get an exemption from me. He is culpable of all of the above and worse. So again, Bernie, 15% of Bernie supporters are going to go and vote for Donald Trump for president. Third party. Third party, Green Party, Libertarian Party, Dario Hunter. I'll keep saying it. By the way, his name is starting to pop up more. There are progressives who are actually covering his campaign. I was shocked and amazed and delighted when I saw that somebody was interviewing uh, Dario Hunter, who comes off as very, very well-spoken, articulate, um, smart on issues, if you like what the Democrats were proposing up until, you know, South Carolina happened, um, you would really feel comfortable and your conscience would be clear if you decided you wanted to vote green in uh, Dario Hawkins especially. So that's it. That's my video and I'm sticking to it. Thanks for watching. This is a really bad look for Donald Trump. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to the channel before I forget and hit the bell if you want notifications. And yes, there's a way to support me via PayPal, one-time donations, David J. Spuria at gmx.com, whatever you can afford. There's also a link to my Patreon account, which I share with another platform I run, which is a music-based channel where I do commentary about music. Either way, I appreciate your support, and I thank you for watching. See you soon.